Hi, I'm so glad you're here with me today. This video is about my Mohs surgery revision. Yes, that's right. Those of you who have been with my channel for the two and a half years I've been here know that within about six months of my starting my channel, I realized there was a little lesion here. Actually, I'd known that all along, but I made the mistake of not going to a dermatologist. And at that point, I went to a doctor who first told me it was skin cancer. It was a misdiagnosis. It turned out not to be skin cancer, but it was a lesion that was growing, so it did need to be removed. Removed. And about two years ago, you all watched me go through that first Mohs surgery is what they call it. And Mohs surgery is a way supposedly to take out lesions, taking the least amount of skin and making the nicest scar. However, it took me a year to heal from that. And by the end of that, my scar had healed up, very bumped up, and that doctor had recommended steroids, which I have now found was really not the correct approach to that. So about seven months ago, almost to the day, on February 19th, I went through a revision of that Mohs surgery scar. And what a revision is, is basically they recut open that scar and they stitch it again, hopefully in a nicer, more smooth way so it will heal better. And so now I am seven months out from that Mohs surgery incision revision, and I have to say I'm very pleased at the healing thus far. I just talked to Dr. Maloney about two weeks ago in Tucson and he is a wonderful surgeon who did my revision and he said that the healing can take place over up to two years so I need to keep sort of massaging this incision and that it will flatten out even more over time. So first I will say if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging and things like procedures that help improve our scars then I hope you'll subscribe and when you click that little bell that just notifies you of my future videos. Okay, let's get down to this. And in this video, I'll be taking you through the healing process so you can see how it all worked out, especially at the first of this back in February. But first, I'd like to introduce you to my doctor, who is Dr. Christopher Maloney, who is a board-certified plastic surgeon in Tucson, Arizona. And I got wind of him because several of my friends have gone to him for various procedures. And of course, I can't show their pictures here, but a couple of them had blessed their plastic I can't say it. A couple of them had eye jobs and a couple of them had facelifts. And I will say that all four of them had phenomenal results. Absolutely beautiful and natural, just themselves but better. And in terms of both the facelifts and the eye work, Dr. Maloney has a very unusual approach in that he does not put you out. He gives you Valium in the morning, you can eat a normal breakfast, and then he just anesthetizes each area locally and then performs the surgeries. Now, yeah. not all of his surgeries, of course, can be that way. I'm sure if he's doing like a breast implant or something like that, he has to put you totally out for that. But I was amazed at my friends, not only gorgeous results, but also that they didn't get the swelling, they didn't have the intense healing time. Within a week, one of them that had a facelift was back at work looking just absolutely fabulous. But if you hadn't known she was going through a facelift, you would have never known. It was truly amazing. And so having seen their results, I always knew if I ever needed a plastic surgeon again, I would use Dr. Maloney. And that's why I consulted with him for my incision revision. And I will say I did that over the telephone, not even Skype, it was just a FaceTime on an iPhone. And he gave me a great consultation. And when I called him, I had thought that maybe I could just get a little fat filler here, or maybe they could like pull up this eye and make this bump lower. But one thing about Dr. Maloney, which I have learned and all of my friends said, he will not do anything that he does not feel will benefit you. You can come in with all these expensive ideas and if it's not the right procedure for you, he will tell you so and he just won't do it. And I will tell you, I'm not sponsored by Dr. Maloney. I get nothing from doing this video. I just think it's important that if we have someone that does a beautiful job for us, that we share it with others so they can benefit too. But before I show you more in depth information about this, let me show you my before and my after, at least my current after. And here is a look at me, and both of the pictures are in makeup, but this is the scar situation before. And as you can see in the top photograph, which is the before, the Mohs incision is quite bumped up there, and you really can't see, but the end of the scar goes actually outside of the end of that picture, and it almost has a little bit of a mosquito bite. It totally was bumped up, and that top picture was taken about a year and two months after I'd had the Mohs surgery, so it should have been largely healed by then. But as you can see in the top picture there, it is still very bumped up. You can still see the incision because that will never be gone. That is a scar on my face. But as you can see, it's long and slender and not bumped up. 
it blends in with the face beautifully. And as you can see on the other eye, which did not have any Mohs surgery, due to my age, I'm losing fat there. I've got a bag there. And so actually the revised incision just looks like another bag. It just blends it in nicely with my face. And I will say I'm seven months out now on this. And Dr. Maloney says the healing can go on for up to two years and to just keep kind of massaging this. And he said to massage it just very gently against that orbital bone, maybe about five times during the day. Kind of whenever you're going to the bathroom is a good way to remember that. And those of you with facial scars, you're not supposed to hack away at them. You're supposed to be very gentle, but firm. So I'll stop talking now. And first I'm going to let Dr. Maloney introduce you to the procedure and what he did to revise this Mohs scar. And then I'll show you a little bit of the healing process. Beth had a cancer in her face and had... Um, Actually, it wasn't a cancer. It was, come to find out, it was not really a cancer. It was a lesion that needed to be removed though. It was a growing lesion. So a lesion that needed to be removed, removed from the face that left her with a circular type of a hole in her face. So when you close those types of holes and different things in various parts of the body, they oftentimes the first time around are under some tension and so that when they heal, they don't heal uniformly along the length of the scar so that the center part of the scar can be indented mm -hmm. and then the more lateral parts can be fuller, what we call sometimes um, as dog ears, that's kind of an expression. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing scar revisions and things like that, we're rearranging tissue, um, which is something the plastic surgeons do. We're doing it to try to camouflage the scar and not only try to make the scar as small as possible, make it flat as possible, make mm -hmm. the contours as nice as possible, to try to get everything to blend in as best we can. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I think you can see by our post-op of results that things are flat, the scar is very well hidden, mm -hmm. and it's a very acceptable aesthetic result considering the size of the hole that she had first time around. Right, and when I came in, I'd had the Mohs surgery the year before, Correct. but he had said that I should use steroids every few months, so tell me about that. So you have to be very careful when you use them and how you use them. Not only can you flatten the scar out, but you can change the color and you can weaken the scar such that it spreads out and widens mm -hmm. and can actually look worse. And certainly, you know, you have to be careful with who you pick that's um, doing these types of things because um, if you're just the type of person that puts steroids in everything, you can cause some significant problems and, you know, not really help the, you know, the, the thing that you're trying to help in the first place. Right. So, and, and when I came in to see you a year after having that Mohs surgery and having all those steroids injected, the scar had widened out. The, do you remember how it looked? It was very bumped up and looked Yeah, weird. I mean, you had asymmetries to the scar and the other thing that's, that um, steroids can do is they can melt fat. And so when yes. you have a little bit of that, you know, um, steroid that gets below the scar and into the fat and, and, and melts some of that fat, then you're going to have a depression. And that's, you know, that's again, that's a risky thing about injecting facial scars. You, know, you have to be careful about it and really ask yourself, what benefit are you going to get versus does someone need to just be referred for a scar revision? Right. Okay. This is what I'm having revised, which is the most surgery that I had almost exactly a year ago, actually a year and two months ago. And unfortunately, it healed in kind of a bumped up way. And here it is in makeup. And you can see, yes, I have a little divot over here because in the tear trough area, you do tend to lose fat naturally. And so I lost a little fat here, but this is more exaggerated because it is bumped up because there is the incision line which goes from here down to here. And I asked my plastic surgeon if I could just have some fat injected in there and actually in the other side as well. And he said, no, the incision is too bumped up, that it does need to be revised, which basically means that they recut, he will recut this incision. And I'm going to have that done in about four days on Tuesday. He's going to recut the incision and stitch it up. And then I will have the stitches pulled out. He'll pull them out in a week after the little surgery there, after the revision. And you won't be seeing this video until after I've had a lot of the healing underway because I realized I don't want to put anything out into the world that I don't want to be magnified. I think there's an energy to YouTube. There's an energy to saying things. There's an energy to putting things out there. And so I'm going to wait and I'll be showing you this when I'm looking a lot better. So here I am right now. This is a good before picture in makeup. And I'll also show you some pictures right now of how it looks without makeup. And so as you can see, the incision really does need to have some work done on it. 
it is bumped up and it looks darker and there's a big shadow there. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I had the revision on Tuesday at 11 and this is Thursday at about seven o'clock in the morning and I have to go to work today. We flew home from Arizona yesterday and one of our flights got canceled. So we were supposed to get home at six o'clock last night. We got home at midnight, but at least we did get home. It was kind of cold and snowy here. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, you can't really tell, but this is very flattened out from what it was when I left. It was very bumped up before and I don't want to touch it because I don't want to get any germs on it. What I've been doing is I'm taking three antibiotics in the morning. Well, one antibiotic, three pills in the morning and in the evening, and I'm rubbing it with Neosporin or not rubbing it with Neosporin. I'm putting Neosporin on it twice a day. And for the first seven days, the stitches will remain in and I'll continue using the Neosporin. I don't have it out of the package because the doctor gave me some little foil packets of Neosporin and I've been using those so far but I absolutely love Neosporin and it's so funny because I've got a little kind of a dot on my cheek where everybody's been attacking me lately. <laughs> my, my hairstylist accidentally like poked her nail into my skin and at first it looked really red and horrible and kind of bloody, it bled a little bit, but I started using Neosporin on it and then very quickly it just totally blended in with my skin. And the first time when I had the original Mohs surgery, they did not tell me to put Neosporin on it. I never did that. And I really feel like the Neosporin is going to really be healing that incision underneath those stitches. And it looks bad and there's a big brown spot here, but that's really just a big thread, um, big kind of knot in the thread. And you can see I've got some kind of bruising there, but I really feel like it's going to be much, much better. And, I'm, and I have great belief in the doctor who did it. And so I'm looking forward to this really being a nice flat scar, to it blending in. Uh, I have to say it's not fun to go through this again because I thought a year ago when I started the whole thing, it would be all done by now because it, it takes a year to a year and a half for the most surgery scar to heal totally. So anyway, so that's how I am two days after the revision. So far, so good. I can actually look at it now, which all day yesterday I couldn't really look at it. It just bothered me. You know, I really feel like it's going to be really, really good. And this part down here was like a little mosquito bite. And I'm so happy because I didn't like the bumped up nature of that. It looked like I had a mosquito bite. And what the doctor did is he said, hey, we'll just flatten that out. So he revised that right there. That's the mosquito bite part. And then he left a little bit of the original incision because he said it had healed very well and then the bumped up part he just went right along there and uh, revised that so anyway we will see how it goes I am really praying for a totally flat incision one that I can totally cover with makeup and uh, I'm really looking forward to that good result okay here we are on day six of my revision and there is my little incision. You can't really tell, but it's flat against my face, which I'm really excited about because the other one had gotten very bumped up. And so I did the revision to flatten out the incision and start back over again. And I've not been wearing makeup on my face at all for seven days. And I am not supposed to wear makeup for another seven days over the incision. Tomorrow morning, yay, at 9.30 or 9.15, I get these stitches out. And that's why it looks like a scab because those are actually black stitches. Um, I have not been wearing makeup for a week. And I'm not planning to wear makeup for next week either because I'm not supposed to put makeup on this. And every time I put mascara on, by the end of the day, I, you know, I'm taking it off with oil and I get raccoon eyes and I think that that makeup would get into that incision area. And so I'm just going to enjoy kind of being a male. And it's been rather freeing and fun not to wear makeup. I don't think I've had, maybe since I was 14 years old before I started wearing makeup, I don't think I've had a solid week where I didn't wear makeup at all. I just get up in the morning, wash my face in the shower. I have been not even using my vitamin C because I don't want to junk this up. I've just been using my moisturizer, that um, CeraVe AM moisturizer, which has some sunblock, and then I'm putting sunblock all over my face. Anyway, it's been interesting not wearing makeup, and the girls at work seem to like my skin without makeup. And I have to say that the last two years of using Retin-A, I think, has really helped my skin. Of course, you know, this has not helped my skin. That's a ma majorly long involved journey. This is day seven of the revision. 
and I just had the stitches taken out and you can see I had the little mosquito bite down here and you can hardly see that now but this still looks kind of dark because it's a scab <laughs> but I think it looks a lot lot better this looks bumped up because I've got this neosporin on it but it really is rather flat and uh, it will flatten out over time too so I feel like it's looking a lot better and I'm still using neosporin on it to keep it nice and clean but it does look bumped up because it's got a little bit of that neosporin on it so you can really tell uh, I think it's really going to flatten out over time supposedly as of Tuesday I can start gently massaging it and I put this silicone cream on it that the doctor gave me in the morning and at night and so I'm going to slowly start working with that incision again a lot of fun but I have about four weeks of videos that I don't have to do so I can take some time off like I did with the original Mose and uh, come back and hopefully it will look a lot better in a few weeks well that was a look at what I've been going through for about the past year and nine months and I have to tell you it has not been fun having a scar on one's face is just very difficult and those of you who are going through something like that out there it is not for the faint of heart but you will get through it and facial scars do heal very nicely and in fact unfortunately this was about the worst area of my face that I could get a scar on because this skin here is very thin and it is joined with this skin which is thicker skin this area tends to get bumped up when it does scar if you had a Mohs incision anywhere else in your face chances are it would heal totally beautifully and you almost would not see it it would almost look invisible but I have to say that I am so glad that I found Dr. Maloney and I totally trust that man and if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in learning about the procedures that can help us look our best if we choose to use them over the years I'm going to be making a video and again I've interviewed Dr. Maloney for this but it is about how to locate a great plastic surgeon and if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to see that then I hope you'll click that little bell and that will just send you an email notification of that and my future videos okay I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day and I've been reading from these miracles now cards from Gabrielle Bernstein let's go ahead and see what positive thought we can think about for today Ooh, this is a good one I surrender it all I surrender it all oh friends this is an absolutely perfect card especially with regard to scar revisions as we're talking about today because when you have a scar it's a little bit like an analogy on most other things in your life you need to do your homework and then chart your plan of action and then surrender and give it to God take care and I'll see you in my next video